They call the Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G15, and here are the benchmarks that are going to be coming up in just a few minutes. Now, as the title says, this is probably my favorite laptop of the year. It's just about perfect to me. There are a few things which I'll get to in just a minute, but I really just wanna have a conversation with you about what I love and about what I wish was slightly improved on this laptop. But overall, I really couldn't be happier with a pretty on the go friendly, highly powerful, great battery life, good color accuracy laptop this year from Asus. First and foremost, um, if I say Asus or Asus or Asos and you like it differently, comment below and let me know your favorite pronunciation because there's many different ones. Also, I might say ROG or Rogue instead of Republic of Gamer, which has also gotten some interesting feedback in the past. So how would you say it? I'm curious. I'm trying to bring some more intimacy to the channel where I'm talking to you guys and engaging with you guys really directly. Um, I tend to be more hesitant, more pulled back, more withdrawn. So I'm trying to bring more community into the channel. I hope it helps. Now, first and foremost, some things that I love about this laptop. The large trackpad is a massive win for this laptop. The G14 is a great laptop, very on the go friendly, and I like it a lot, but the trackpad is so rinky dink. It's a lot like the Flow X13. Let me grab that real quick. So the Flow X13 and the G14 share this similar trackpad. It's small and a little clunky. The G15, Oh, it sounds so nice. It's so well secured to the chassis. Um, I'm gonna give you a quick sample of the keyboard and trackpad so you can hear them for yourself. Now that you heard the keyboard, it's great as well. It's quiet, it has a longer key press, so it's a medium to long key press. You have all of your arrow keys, which fit nicely on the cluster. You can quickly jump into the Armory Crate Center. You can adjust the way your keyboard presents the backlighting. You can make it brighter or dimmer. You can change the fan modes quickly right from your keyboard while you're in the middle of your workflow. There's a number of options on the keyboard that just simplify your daily workflow and enjoyment of using the computer. Now this laptop is a mix of magnesium alloy and plastic, which makes it light for a 15 inch gaming laptop. It's just, it's a nice on the go package. I love the rounded edges, which really just show for great build. The only thing I'm really not fond of is the network port. And the reason I don't like it is because it makes this nice smooth edge here, which would be on both sides of the laptop. It just adds these two little chunky things that pop out and I just I just don't like that. I kind of wish they would have had the little tab that kind of folds up, but then again, that's something that you could break. And so it's nice that they don't have that, but it just removes that nice smooth aesthetic uh, that, would, that would come into play there. Now there is a catchy edge here. That's something I wish in the future that they would uh, refine a little bit more. Um, but overall, the assembly of this laptop comes together very nicely. You have speakers on the bottom of the chassis with two large vents. And then on the top of the chassis, on the keyboard deck here, we have our bass speakers. So they give more of like the low ends. And so the audio experience is really nice. And I'm gonna play that for you right now. If you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of the G15, you can head down in the description below and click that link. Now, if you do use that link to make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, as always, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, one of the reasons this laptop does not get, oh my gosh, it's absolutely perfect, is a webcam. And when you think about it, since 2020, webcams have become very prevalent. Uh, for me, I do a lot of online meetings, and so webcams are really a must. And it's kind of annoying to have to bring, you know, some sort of extra webcam and put it on your laptop when you're on the go. Say you're at a coffee shop and you need to jump on a quick meeting. Uh, all you could really do is audio. Now you could pull out your phone and, and do a video from your phone, but it would be nice if there was a webcam. Now, the second thing I both love and hate about this laptop is the port selection, and they've provided us with a mini SD card slot. Now, normally for creators, I say it would be awesome to have a full SD card slot for both video editing and photography. But now that I've moved to the Blackmagic Pocket Cam 6K, these are the drives that I'm filming on. And this doesn't plug into the side of a laptop. This is USB Type-C uh, to USB Type-C. And here, of course, is a standard SD card. Now, one reason that I think the mini SD card is great is because it actually creates some expansion for your laptop. If you were to buy a mini SD card, you could slide in a 512 or one terabyte mini SD card and expand your laptop's storage. 
So let's say you're, go you're on the go, you want to be able to bring a few extra little drives, you don't want to haul a bunch of these around, which these are great, I love these. These are the Samsung T5s. I'll link them below if you're interested. Um, that would give you more expansive storage without carrying around big drives like this. So you could plug one of those in, back up some of your files, unplug, and then keep shooting for the day or you know whatever you might do. It's just nice, it like, creates expandable storage that doesn't hang off the side of your laptop. Um, now on the other side, we have this standard HDMI, power port, network jack, USB type A, and then two USB type C's and a headphone jack. So the port selection on this laptop is great. Speaking of on the go, another thing I wanna point out is the battery life. This comes with a 90 watt hour battery and that 90 watt hour battery gives us great battery life. You can see the results coming up on the screen now. It really is amazing that a gaming laptop can provide this much battery life. And that's really complements to that Ryzen 9 5900HS processor. Now do note that all of the battery results you're seeing right now were with the iGPU mode turned on, which means you have no access to your dedicated GPU while you are getting these battery life results. So this is really optimizing it. Like I need to get battery because I'm, you know, writing scripts or I'm doing something that doesn't take a lot of GPU performance. And I can wait till I get somewhere that I can plug in my computer and start using my GPU again. Now, another thing that's actually improved over the G14, which makes me really happy, is the backlighting on the keyboard. As you can see, it's not mushy. The backlighting on the G14 is very mushy. You have these silver keys, so they're kind of hard to see, especially if it's really bright out, or if it's really dark out, and, the, and it's like the keyboard and lighting is really mushy. I just was disappointed with the G14's keyboard backlighting. The G15 massively improved on that, and it makes me very happy. Now, we're gonna get into the performance benchmarks, but keep in mind, there's one more thing that I don't love about this laptop that doesn't make it absolutely perfect. And that'll come to you near the end of the performance benchmarks. But right now, let's check out Cinebench R20, R23, Geekbench single core, and multi-core. Now this laptop comes with the RTX 3080, 16 gigs of RAM, the Ryzen 9 5900HS, and one terabyte SSD. Now simulated benchmarks are great, but real world tests are really what gets me happy. So let's go ahead and look at 3D modeling. The 3D modeling results for this laptop were great. I thought we'd be slightly higher in Autodesk Maya with a 3080, but it still scored a great score above the 200s, which will give you plenty of performance in the 3D modeling apps. Now comment below which 3D modeling app you use the most. I'm curious what y'all are using and how I could optimize these tests to give you better results. Moving into After Effects, the After Effects standard benchmark and the render benchmark both had great results, getting up to the top end of the charts for both. Because of your amazing feedback, I now am featuring gaming benchmarks on my channel. I'm really excited to be releasing these now and on future laptops. So just keep an eye out for those. They might not be on every single video, but they're gonna be as much as possible from here on out. Video editing in Premiere Pro was great. You can see the export times coming up on the screen now. Regarding playback, 4K had zero drop frames, 6K B-RAW was really smooth with the RTX 3080. And then as you see in the red footage, it had substantially more drop frames. Now here's the third reason that this laptop is not perfect to me, and that's the thermals. I was really surprised by the thermals of this laptop. We saw up to 94 degrees Celsius during the export time out of 4K in turbo mode. Now keep in mind that if you bump it down to silent mode, you can get about a minute slower export time, but substantially, substantially cooler thermals for the laptop and quieter fan noise. So honestly, if I were gonna be using this laptop, I would not run it in turbo mode. I'd run it in performance or even silent mode because the laptop ran cooler and quieter in that mode and the export time was barely affected. So keep that in mind when considering this laptop. 
Photoshop is not gonna have any problems. As you get into these really high performance laptops, if it can handle video editing and 3D modeling, Photoshop and the other design tools like Figma, Sketch, and the Affinity Design Suite is gonna have no problems. What are your thoughts on the G15? Perfect, needs improvements, what would you improve? Comment below and let me know. Otherwise, links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.